Again, I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar. Um, again, my name's Maya McGee. I am a senior advisor for the online uh, sport management program. I've had the opportunity to advise for the program a little bit over two years or so now. I'm really excited about the time that we'll have here today. Um, also here with me, I have my colleague, Jeremiah Nast. Hi, I'm Jeremiah. I'm, an, I'm the other advisor on this program. Uh, I may have spoken with some of you before. Um, really passionate about the program. I actually have some experience in the sport management field. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited to speak with our uh, with our, our students today because this is, I say it all the time, it's my favorite program to work with. So um, yeah, I'm excited. All right, and with us today, we also have Brandon. Brandon, if you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm Brandon. I'm in my last semester here at Kansas with the master's program. I'm from Maryland. I've had experience interning with um, the Ravens, the Orioles, the Capitals, and the Wizards. Um, while I was in college, undergrad, I was a four-year swimmer. Um, in person, I like to travel and be active. All right, thanks, Brandon. Tamia, we have Tamia Irving with us here today too as well. Tamia, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, sorry about that. Well, I'm in my second to last semester here in the program. I'm currently working to gain experience to get in the sports program. Um, I'm currently working in the financial industry at this point. Um, sports is just something that I truly enjoyed and I volunteered as coaches before. So it's just something that I'm looking to explore. Perfect. And then we also have Justin. Justin, if you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure, thank you. Um, I am in my last semester as well. Um, we uh, got into this program um, a little bit after the fact, after being in the legal field, which I'm currently working as a project manager in, uh, because it was something that I, I deeply have have loved for the for the not only the curriculum but also moving forward in it uh, as a career. I work at the youth level. I have three sons, so I coach at the youth level. Have volunteered for some tournaments uh, as well as some other larger things like the uh, Casey Marathon and things like that and just really hoping to take everything that I learned towards that towards the future. Great. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We're really, really excited to get this information um, out to you, potential students. So a couple of things that I want you all to keep in mind. We have a series of questions that we will go through um, and you should see a question and answer section. So as we're going through the different slides, if you come up with any type of questions that you may have regarding the program, definitely feel free to type those questions in and we'll get to those questions at the very end of the uh, presentation. I just wanna make sure that I'm respectful of everyone's time as I do understand that this is a lunchtime webinar, so we want to be able to move through the questions that we have. And again, if something comes up as we're moving through, please don't hesitate to type those in and just keep in mind that we'll answer all questions at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so a couple of questions that uh, you'll, you guys will see that are filtered here. Um, so just want to start out by finding out a little more from uh, the three of you. Why did you choose the online master's in sport management program to get your degree? So I chose uh, the online master's of management program, one through Kansas because of the reputation. I also really like the eight week classes. So you can really focus on one class at a time instead of having two or three classes within 16 week periods. It really gave you uh, time to focus there. And I guess kind of piggybacks off of that is the online. online. And I want to do internships and gain experience while I get my master's. So the online program allowed the flexibility to work weekends and evenings where mainly the internship would require me. For me, it's similar. It was the fact that it's an eight-week program, um, one class at a time, and I work full-time, so I'm not currently in the industry. So in order for me to still, you know, pay for things, I still need to be able to work full-time, but then I also wanted to be able to, I guess, further my education. I felt, I felt like if I was going to go into this new career, I need to show them that I was truly serious about it since I don't have previous experience. So I decided to do the online sports manager program. Yeah, I, I have the same yeah. general experiences that to me is having. Uh, I do work full time, like I said, in the litigation field uh, from a software standpoint. Um, but also, you know, having a legal background kind of led me towards something in compliance, which is, well, I, I think we'll touch on courses later. But 
Um, so really building on that sort of structure. And then uh, the online, like they spoke of, is the flexibility that you have um, between being able to take classes, whether you do it at night, the weekends, or whatever free time you do have. Um, but it's, it's a little bit self-paced. All right. Uh, and I think everybody, especially because it's online and looking at kind of mixing that flexibility with um, kind of making sure you're interacting. Um, what were your guys' interactions with the uh, faculty and what, what were the professors like? And I guess uh, we, we can kind of go in that same order again. Uh, we can start with you, Brandon. Um, so the professors were always um, willing to be there, um, ask if you need questions. Um, they put out their email, email, email me anytime. Um, and pr most of the time they respond pretty quickly if you have a question. Um, they're also willing to have Zoom calls or whatever just to kind of talk about whatever you may need. Um, so they're always there for you and they're always willing to help in whatever way they can. Um, I, I feel the same way as Brandon. Anytime that I've emailed them, even some, some of the professors, if you email them late at night, because it'll be times where I, it's 9, 10 o'clock at night, and I'm sending an email because I have a question or something, and there'll be some professors that actually respond to you like within five or 10 minutes at night. And then there are some where they'll at least get back to you the very next morning. So they're pretty quick with their responses, considering you are online. Or if you need anything, like I needed a letter of recommendation from two of my professors, and they were both willing to do it. So um, if you if you want to speak with them, like on the phone or via Zoom or a meeting like that, they're always willing to do it. I've, I just have, haven't done it, but anytime that I've ever emailed them, they've always responded back. Yeah, same experiences with the response time. They've all uh, gotten back to you with questions, uh, just if you're bouncing ideas, things of that sort, because some of the, the curriculum is a little bit more open-ended to where you can self-pace it a little bit, but also add to or or you work with them in terms of the content. But uh, I have a, a meeting with one of my professors tomorrow, um, just kind of talking about the internship class that we're that I'm currently in, as well as uh, I, I had uh, some uh, good back and forth with uh, the legal, the, the law, sports law professor, because he had a big, uh, before he came over to KU, he was a compliance uh, uh, athletic director. And so, you know, it, Anytime you want to bounce ideas or, to, or talk to them, they're always very willing and, and able. What was your favorite class and why? Um, I'd have to say my favorite class was the um, sport facilities class. Um, one big reason is that um, it's one of the directions I want to take my um, career in sports. So it kind of hit home to me in that and kind of gave me more knowledge in that area. But there was a lot of classes that I enjoyed, um, especially when you're able to create a um, uh, marketing plan or just a general um, financing plan at the end of the program at the end of the class so that's pretty cool for me it was the independent study so with the independent study I think there's four options that you can choose and one of the options is to study abroad so I had the opportunity to go to Auckland New Zealand um, this past January and the reason why that was my favorite class is because of the different interactions that you were able to do with uh, different people in the industry. So you got to learn more about what it is that they do, um, how they operate, and then you got to tour some of the facilities. We got to interact with uh, with one of the rugby teams there. We got to do like learn in different sports. And so it was kind of one of those things where you were learning, but then you were, you were getting a chance to kind of apply what you were what you have learned and what you were currently learning yeah i, I kind of have a few but I'll, I'll just touch on them quickly uh the the sports facility class i mean obviously with that being the introductory course there was a project right off the bat where you get to um take a look at a, a specific facility and i was able to get the pinnacle um clinic in kck that the the, the uh, sporting kc uses so right off the bat i was kind of hooked in terms of the curriculum and the coursework but even um things that I don't have as, as probably as strong as a background in the finance class, while it, it may not sound super exciting, it actually build that framework uh, to be able to use it uh, more well-rounded. And so I actually probably took the most from the finance class. Yeah, and I think, I think to me, it kind of stole the show there. I think my favorite class <laughs> would be going to Auckland, New Zealand as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, for this goes for both uh, Brandon, you with your um, your internships, as well as uh, Justin and Tamia, who are, are obviously not working in the industry yet. Uh, have you been able to take things uh, that you learned in class and actually apply them into your 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 current roles? So, 
for me, it's kind of it's changed my thought, changed my thought process and perspective. So I'm able to look at things, whether I'm doing um, some minor things um, and see how my bosses are doing things and kind of think about how I learned them in class and kind of think, think in my head, okay, if I was doing that in that position, I would kind of change it, do it differently. Um, as I developed, helped develop theme nights with the Orioles. So taking and just kind of thinking about them from a different perspective is what uh, I've learned from a lot of the coursework we've done. I think for me, although I'm not necessarily in the industry, a lot of things you can learn, you can really apply it to, to anything. At the end of the day, it's, it's business. So just interacting with my manager or interacting with my peers, kind of looking at things from a management perspective, it kind of changed my thought process. And then also just going into, like, when I go to a basketball game or when I go to, like, my niece's volleyball game, I kind of look at it from a different perspective, kind of like thinking about some of the things that we've learned, like sponsorship. I'm looking around, see if I see any advertising. And so I think it kind of changed the way I look at everything. Or just when I walk in and, and interacting with the people, like who are doing like game day operations or something like that, just wondering like all the things that it took to get to this point for the fans to experience. So um, I think although I'm not necessarily industry, like I can, I can apply it to anything. Yeah, the same. Yeah, uh, same. Uh, currently, um, based upon project manager, so I do have a team, and so some of the the coursework that we got and and how to to work with the different personalities and things like that, those are things that you can take and take them across broad spectrums. Although you know, I'm not currently in a sports management position. Um, I do, like I said, mention uh, work in the youth sports, and so I've already taken to some of the fundraising techniques that we took um, had that last semester actually. So really good timing. Um, knowing that, you know, some of the summer um, participation in youth sports may or may not happen. So needing to drum up uh, additional fundraising efforts uh, for the fall or whenever that may be um, so that our club teams or, you know, even as, as young as my five and six year old baseball team so that they can, you know, start to work towards whatever they may be, be, be doing as soon as they can get back to the field. All right. So now when you guys think in terms of just like your interaction that you've had throughout the duration of the degree program, do you have an opportunity to talk or interact often with your classmates? I know for me, I was, when I thought of online class, I thought we'd just be submitting papers and uh, things like that, assignments. But um, there's also, just, there's discussion questions every week. Um, so you're submitting um, co comments on people's discussion posts. Um, there's also a couple classes where we were um, having to get a group of us together, assign group, and then create a video for a discussion. So that had us more interaction with classmates um, during those classes. I had the same thoughts of you, Brandon. I just thought we would be turning in assignments and papers every week. So the discussion posts were kind of a surprise for me. Um, but it was, it was kind of nice because you kind of get to see what everybody else is thinking. And then it's been a couple of classes where we did group discussion. So you were assigned to a group. And between your group, you were going to, you know, talk about whatever the discussion was that week. And so through, through those interactions with my classmates, like I still talk to some of my classmates now. Like we still uh, communicate with each other if we have questions or, you know, just to kind of help each other out. So Yeah, same experiences yeah, same um, in terms uh, of uh, yeah. the group work that we ended up doing uh, I spe specifically within the legal course. And I believe that there's maybe within the marketing course as well. Um, I had a, a specific group for a, a series of projects and we actually kind of started to, you know, we'd see certain things when you're, you're reading your ESPN of the day, a story like that, we kind of circulate and talk about even post work um, that we did within the course. So um, there's definitely interaction and, and you have the accessibility, you know, through email, um, through things like the Zoom meetings you can set up with your group. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of opportunity to, to connect and interact. Uh, what are the networking opportunities that are actually available through the online program? You know, you're able to talk with your um, professors and classmates and kind of get to know one another a little bit. Um, so that's kind of part of the networking there. But I also found that, you know, having the internship and you know, the internship class now, um, you're able to probably even further extent with people that are, you know, some of the people that are currently working um, in the professional sport industries. Um, so that, I kind of find that is extremely helpful. Um, also, um, I follow the sports management on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, Dr. Bass actually does uh, these like one-on-ones with different alumni that has, that are currently in the industry, and you kind of get to see where they, you know, come from, and you know what they're doing now, and learn about how they 
uh, got to where they are and kind of learning about their experiences. And, you know, that's, that's one way to be able to network and kind of, he knows a lot of people in the industry and then a lot of your professors know different people. And then you interact with your classmates where some are in the industry and you might meet somebody that's doing something that, you know, you're interested in. So there's, there's definitely different ways that you can uh, network. Yeah, I mean, even yeah, on, a, even on, a, on, a, on a, a more direct route, you know, that route. Facebook um, group has posting specifically to different internships and, and job opportunities that are available. Um, and so that's, uh, I mean, that's that's direct route more uh, networking, but at the same time, that does come from Dr. Bass. And then I know from his, his larger, you know, connection network. Um, the other thing is uh, a professor I had, Molitor, uh, he again, worked as a compliance officer and he's kind of, uh, he steered me towards different associations and um, conferences and webinars that you can join um, so that you can, again, get your name in uh, with certain groups and, and kind of see if there's there's different avenues that you can uh, take within those different things that you may, whether it be a marketing group or a fundraising group or things of that sort, you know, there's just, there's a lot of, of resources and connections that they have. All right. So I think that everyone will run into this at some point in any type of program that you go into. So um, with your experience, what would you say has been the most challenging part of the program? I would say, especially, especially toward the beginning was just trying to be able to balance the like, experience, internship working with the, the program and trying to figure out what was required and um, you know, writing papers, but um, being able to get into that, that, that routine once you got in that routine, I think it helped um, a lot. I, I would say the same. So it's it had been 13 years since I've been out of school. So there was a pretty big gap before I had to do a, another class again. So just trying to get used to coming home from work and having to do something and really trying to focus. And that was kind of like getting my schedule set. That was probably the most challenging in the beginning. Yeah, definitely a yeah, time definitely management a, and, you know, setting up, you know, setting up as concrete of a schedule concrete of a for schedule. the week as it can. Yeah. Um, that, that's always going to be a time management issue. But the thing similar to me, I'd been out of school, you know, uh, in, to this degree for about a decade. And so um, really getting back into the difference between writing uh, a school-based pieces and, and then also the interactions, you know, the, it's a lot different. Um, going to youth events or going to uh, different sporting events, but then also talking to them on an educational basis. And so really like honing in the fact that it has to be a professional, but also um, interactive pieces like the papers are papers are challenging, but in a way that is, is, is different than probably you would have written for any other type of uh, a paper in the past. All right. And kind of to that point, um, how, how are you guys able to actually find that balance? Are there any tips that you guys have um, in order to to share to help our, our future students to make sure that they can make that adjustment quicker? I think for me, the biggest thing is to stay organized is, is to, to know like when you have papers due, know when you have to do readings or when quizzes, things like that are, are, are going to happen and then be able to plan them out in your week. So if you have to work in the evenings, you know, during the day, maybe you have some time to figure out when you can work on it. And um, what does help is that almost every assignment throughout the entire program is going to be doing like a Sunday, Monday of that, of that next week. So it'll open up on the, the Monday and then you have a week to do it. So um, knowing they're, they're all about the same uh, date when they're, everything's due each week, that does help in kind of balancing things out, knowing when you have to have things completed by. Yes. Organization is definitely going to be your best friend in this program. Just understanding and making sure you're aware of due dates what to do when, especially like in the summer times or like when you have vacation. So you want to make sure that most, I would say majority of the classes, you're going to be aware what's coming up next. So if you're able to get some stuff done earlier ahead of that vacation, so you're not, you know, trying to work on school while you're vacationing. So organization is definitely going to be your best friend. Same, yeah, same sort of experiences. It, it's quasi self so you do know what's coming, but you know that it's not all necessarily handed to you up front. I, I personally kind of front load my week because you never know what the back end might look like. Um, uh, so Monday, Tuesday, especially, uh, try to at a minimum get through readings, um, start to you know build out if there's a paper due that week, the discussion boards, getting ahead of it so that you can kind of when you have the responses, you can let people then 
get their their posts out there too so that you can again stay ahead of the curve um but just like these guys said i mean organization time management all those sorts of things just building out uh carve out specific time periods where you can knock out big the big chunks of things and then be able to still have that time to go back and refine it when you think of uh, just the program overall, the duration that you've been in, because you guys are so close to being done. Um, what surprised you the most about the online masters in sport management? For me, um, living in Maryland, I didn't expect to have a connection to the Kansas community just from online. But after going through the program and almost being done, I feel like I've developed a connection um, to Kansas community without even having to go to Kansas. So I thought that was kind of a cool aspect that I didn't expect to um, gain from the program. Um, for me, I think the my biggest surprise is how much I actually learned. I was a little worried that doing a, a online course, like I almost felt like I was going to be self-taught, and I wasn't for sure how that was going to work. But um, you you don't really feel like you're self-taught. Like they give you the resources that you need that really helps with all the different assignments, and even during doing some of the assignments that they give you, like some of the papers, especially like your final papers in each class really gives you an opportunity to kind of step in a certain role and kind of uh, see things from their perspective and be able to kind of plan that out. So for me, the biggest surprise is actually how much I've learned. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, to Brandon's point, I, I was a, an undergrad Jayhawk. So if nothing else, I just doubled down on my Jayhawkness. Um, overall, I think just like a curriculum and everything else, the thing that, that I've noticed more is even when you're watching, you're watching The Last Dance or you're at a high school football game, the way that your mind kind of tends to start to gear toward where you want to go and not as a fan so much. Um, even in some of the conversations I've had, um, you know, with friend pools and things of that sort, um, you kind of, you think differently, you analytically talk about the sports field a lot different than I think I ever did before. Um, you know, your fandom is, is always there, but now you think you think differently. You think like a sports management director, advisor, whatever your path may be. You just, the mindset changed probably like, I would say probably the second semester when you really got a couple courses under my belt. I felt like I was thinking about the field a lot differently than I thought it was going to be from a curriculum standpoint. All right. And hash, I'm sure hashtag Jayhawk double down is trending at this point. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what advice and tips would uh, for success would you guys have specifically for new students as they're getting ready for and getting into the program? So I would say organization is huge, um, is knowing when they're going to be due, um, being, a, set, being ahead of, um, if you have something to do, be open with your professor, say, I might be having a uh, struggle with this due date, maybe they're vacation, whatever, well in advance, don't uh, tell them right before you go on vacation, kind of be um, proactive in that respect. Um, and stay organized is my big thing. Um, I would definitely say, say the same, stay organized. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I know sometimes we get a little timid about reaching out to people, but don't be afraid to reach out to classmates. Don't be afraid to reach out for to your professor. It sounds cheesy, but they really are there to help you. And um, so definitely don't forget to, you know, reach out, ask for help, and have an open mind. Like, just go in there with an open mind, and I think you'll be fine. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, both of those things, I, I don't have much to add on those two fronts, I, but again, to what Tamia is saying, like the content of each different course will seriously make you think differently. Um, you know, the ethics course, I guarantee I haven't had anything like that since, uh, or the research course, anything like that since undergrad, um, but be like, be willing to be challenged because those two courses specifically challenged me a lot because it's just not a mindset that you normally have. Like, like to me, I was saying, being open to understanding that those, those things do have a baseline for what you may use them for. And even if it's uh, on accident, you'll, you'll notice that you use things from these courses uh, in your everyday life that you never thought you would. All right. Great. Well, those were the questions that um, we had that were automatically generated. I think that one of the things um, that I noticed um, as we went through the slides, one of the things that we didn't really elaborate on um, is Jayhawkville. So I just want to make sure that I touch bases on that as I'm sure you all have had an opportunity to use it. What has your experience been like uh, with using Jayhawkville? So Jayhawkville is like a little a city that there's a, a module we can use um, to kind of for case studies. 
And I thought it was it was helpful because you're able to go in and use your use your assignments based on the um, the city um, and kind of tailor it personally to the way the city would be. And um, sometimes you have to take exaggerations, real life situations, um, and kind of put some other information that you may have to think of. But yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's interesting because it's this fake city, and then based on the like we had one assignment where. I think we had to pitch the World Cup for soccer, I believe, and using one of the stadiums there. And so it's like you, you're you giving information, and then based off of what you learn through the assignments, you kind of have to be creative and add more information to it. So it's a good little way for you to be able to apply like a real-world experience or a hypothetical experience. Uh, that's exactly the project that I was going to pinpoint to uh, because in our facilities one, I'm a soccer geek. So you were, um, you were using the Jayhawkville stadium, which is kind of this uh, smaller version of the Cardinal stadium and kind of uh, for football and you're kind of pitching it as a potential venue for a world cup. Um, and that was, that was definitely one of my favorite projects throughout the entire. Um, but then we've also done, I believe it was for maybe marketing or, uh, I think it was for marketing or fundraising where you're you were planning an event within Jayhawkville and you're using the parameters using the different locations within the city and you know, like like Brandon was mentioning you're you're expanding or exaggerating kind of the capabilities but you're really trying to tailor it and I live about three blocks from a high school and I guarantee that I've started to compare Jayhawkville Central to the high school that I live pretty close to um, probably should not do that but I have we should all be so lucky to go to Jayhawkville Central um, I have one from uh, that was actually asked by a um, a uh, an attendee uh, who says that uh, and it seems kind of pertinent to this. Uh, they were, they're located in Texas. Uh, were there any technical issues? Uh, if so, um, what kind of help and support was, was provided? So I never had any technical issues with any of the platforms we've used. Um, I know I've seen in the beginning of the module, module zero kind of talks about the course. Um, there's um, technical issues that you may, kind of how they can be resolved right in Canvas. Um, but if there, again, if there's any issues, usually you can email professor, um, or uh, go through Canvas if it's a Canvas specific um, type question. Well, I am in Texas, so um, no issues for me at all. Um, if I think maybe one time one of the articles wasn't working for me, like it had been working and then it just stopped and it was just simple as emailing my professor saying, this, uh, I can't no longer get into the article and he just emailed me the article. So if there's, if there's ever any issues, like he said, at the beginning of each model, at the beginning of each uh, module, they'll have like your tech resources listed there for you. In every class, they'll have that. So just in case you forget, you don't have to go back to the last class. Every class at the beginning, it'll have all the resources that you can use. Uh, the only tech related thing I can recall is uh, when we were doing one of the group discussions that had to be recorded. Um, we, you know, we had some technical difficulties, no different than what you would have any other day. Um, and that was mostly just the resolve of the group just continued to, to power through. I know that uh, they do provide you um, with some of the, the free access to uh, different applications that you can record those, those, those meetings on um, with a lot of time that was more than enough. So yeah, I, I can't recall any specific tech things that, was, that weren't outside of the norm of what you would do on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, great. So it looks like uh, there's um, another question just in regards to um, an individual as many of you are working full time. So um, have a prospective student. He works full time in sports. Um, so he must work game nights. Um, if you think in terms of how flexible your this program has been for you, how flexible were professors if you had to maybe miss a lecture were lectures recorded? Or did you feel that missing how many lectures penalized you in any way? So that's kind of right where I'm at. I've been working for many different sports teams, having to report on game nights. Um, so the lectures, there's no, re, there's no um, time you have to be at a computer with a live lecture. Um, so there's not, they're not gonna have you Wednesdays at eight every night having to lecture. Everything's typed out or recorded if, if it's recorded. Um, so you can go in and watch it. So there's really no penalty um, if you don't, if not, don't show up on a certain time. Um, you just have to finish the assignments by the due date. Um, so yeah, there's no, 
it's really flexible. You can plan out in the mornings, get all your work done that's required, and the evenings can go in and um, work game nights or whatever you have to get done. Yes, it's, it's, it's a very flexible program. Like, they'll, they'll give you the lecture notes. Like, we'll have lecture notes in any pre-recorded video there. So you can watch it and look at it at any time during the week. So there's like literally no problem. Yeah, my, my yeah, kids had my practices kids Monday through Friday, Monday games Friday. on the weekends, and it never felt like there was any gonna be any penalty if you weren't able to get to certain things. The only thing is is collaborating. If you do have group projects, the ability to collaborate on a, on a time and, and you know, set aside a couple hours if you need to do those projects with a group. Um, but again, you know, being up front and being uh, telling the, the professor if you guys do have uh, scheduling issues, um, that they'll, they'll, they'll work with you on it. Okay, it does look like we have a couple of questions that have been posed about and I know, um, I believe, uh, I, Brandon, I know you've mentioned a number of internships that you've participated in, uh, and uh, I believe Justin and Tamir, you guys are in your internships right now, uh, which must, I'm sure is offering its own set of opportunities uh, due to the current landscape. Um, but can we just kind of expand on kind of how you guys procured your internships um, and if what that experience has been like? Uh, and to me, if you could also, uh, when you speak to it, if you could expound, expand upon the um, study abroad opportunity? So um, I got my internships, um, just kind of going around to the different sports teams going on and playing um, through the websites. Um, I know um, I've, uh, uh, the sports management program at Kansas does have a Facebook page where people, um, the director and people have posted internship opportunities in there for people that are looking for them. Um, but again, I've mainly looked um, in my area and have been able to expand to different sports organizations. Um, I think for me, the internship was huge in kind of discovering what I wanted. So I started with the Orioles, my first internship experience. I was able to work there for two seasons and it kind of gave me the direction that I wanted to kind of go toward guest experience um, and um, facility operations, especially after working with the Ravens with, get, with their guest services, kind of figure out that's the direction I wanted to go with the help of the master's program and doing all these um, internships for different organizations. So my internship experience has been a little different due to COVID. So with everything being um, on shutdown and lockdown, they actually created a class for our internship. So it's a case, it's, it's a class using the case study method. So we're given these cases and we kind of have to put ourselves in the position of the athletic director or a coach or just whatever the position might be for whatever the case is and then we have to answer these questions and it's you're writing a paper but it's kind of like basically from your perspective of that so you're kind of getting an opportunity to kind of see what the different challenges is for these different groups and so that's it's been a little different because I'm not actually at a company during my internship it's more of a, a class base. Um, but that's just something that they created because of the current situation that they in. So I thought that was really nice that they were uh, able to do that for us. And then as far as the study abroad opportunity, um, that was really great um, from the perspective of the different things that we were able to do while we were there. So not only were we able to learn, I, I knew nothing about cricket. Like I knew of cricket, but I did not know how it worked. So not only did we learn what cricket was about, but we also got the opportunity to play. And then we actually got the opportunity to watch a game, but then we got to talk to the club owners and the coaches, and we kind of were able to answer questions. So there were sessions where we were able to talk to them individually. So we got to see what it is that they do, what is their experiences like, how did they get to that experience, like some of the steps that they took to get where they were. And then we actually kind of got to experience what, what it is that they uh, did. So that was pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm also in the curriculum piece of the internship uh, that was created this, this semester. Um, and it does, it feels like you're sitting within an athletic department, at least through the first couple weeks um, to where you're being given um, genericized uh, case studies and basically like what would you do 
Um, I know that the first one that we had was regarding a coaching football hire. And at the end, Dr. Bass was basically like, well, so who was this on? And uh, I won't spoil exactly which one we did, but it was a lot of fun being right or wrong. Let's put it that way. Um, I've done a few uh, volunteer events and things of that sort. I definitely see where um, getting the live internship would have been would have been ideal. But again, you know, what they've put forth, at least in the first couple of weeks from this internship course curriculum has been really, really good. I feel like very strongly that it, it, it's built. Uh, I've already started to, to even write a little bit differently. Um, and I know that that was kind of probably the baseline for, for what the, the internship curriculum was for. All right, great. So I'm not really sure. One of the questions, um, I, I know that since you guys originally started the program, when you originally started, we didn't offer the mentorship program. I'm not sure whether or not, are you any of you a part of the mentorship or had any opportunities to maybe network with um, maybe graduates from the degree program or alumni from anything like that at all? So Cody, just to um, make sure, so the internship, the, the mentorship program is something that is new to the program. So they started a little uh, ways before that was actually started. So they wouldn't be able to speak to that. Um, but definitely something that I would be more than happy to share more information about if you have any questions. Um, and so the next question that I wanna make sure that I go on to too as well is, um, so with coming close to graduation, do you feel confident in job placement into the field of your interest? I, I do feel confident um, going out into after graduation. Um, I feel with the mixture of internship and the knowledge of have, having a master's degree um, will definitely be beneficial in trying to hopefully, hopefully put me above the other competition to um, that are applying to those uh, same jobs. I, I feel the same way as Brandon. I think they have a lot of resources that are out there that will help you get to where you need to go or where you want to go. Yeah, but again, the, everything that we've, we've taken from this course and curriculum and, and the program as a whole, um, you know, I think once you truly get your foot in the door, and I think all of us will be, like Brandon said, a leg up on getting our foot in the door, like the, the product that will come from each and every one of us as a result of this program will be high quality stuff that'll keep you, keep you there for sure. All right. Have you, have any of you guys uh, been pursuing any other types of certifications or has uh, your, uh, the faculty encouraged you to pursue, um, you know, kind of tangentially things that, that would help you with the program? So I haven't been pursuing any other certifications per se, but I've been pursuing internships and trying to broaden my uh, knowledge of different organizations, different sports teams. Um, one thing, I graduated um, and then went directly into my master's program. So one thing I wish I would have learned, would have known sooner in undergrad was to get an internship experience um, because that's what I've learned is a huge part of it as well as having the degree. So um, if you're able to do so, I would recommend throughout the program, the two-year program, working on trying to um, find internships with sports teams or college teams, whatever it may be in your area, to kind of help you um, in the long run. Yeah, I haven't been taking any additional or working towards any certifications or anything like that. It's just been strictly trying to get through these classes. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a specific certification or anything of that sort, um, but uh, one of the professors, Professor Molitor, after I took the legal course and I have a legal background, you know, he kicked around uh, joining a compliance membership um, group around the country that, that has a, a yearly big conference for networking and things of that sort that he he highly recommended. Uh, also kind of looked into potentially going back for a teaching degree um, to be able to kind of put all these sorts of pieces together. Um, and yeah, I mean, those coaching coaching certifications obviously would be part of that too. Uh, like I said, I'm a soccer geek, so I will probably get some licensing in, in soccer coaching so that I can potentially move up. Um, if I were to go into an administrative role, um, having those higher licensings would, would be beneficial to go along with the masters on top. Okay, great. So when you think in terms of preparing for a career in the sport industry, have you had an opportunity to put together a competitive portfolio or to show potential employers? So I've had some interviews in the past uh, few months before the virus really hit. Um, and I've been able to take my experience internships in the class and kind of explain some of the things I've been doing and some of the questions they've asked. Um, but I haven't physically taken in like assignments I've done and showed them directly. I think for me, like using the study abroad as um, 
as an experience. Um, one of the things that we did while we were there was kind of over how we can use this in our resume on our cover letters. We kind of broke down using the different things that we've learned and we, and we talked about it, we discussed it, like things, you know, what would be, uh, what should be said, what should not be said. So we kind of spent the day and, you know, a couple of hours kind of going over our resume and what it will look like using the study abroad program and uh, your master's. So they kind of give you opportunities to help you put that stuff together to get you ahead. Yeah, I don't think I've formally put together a portfolio. I know that based upon feedback um, on particular writing pieces, um, uh, the marketing plan that we did as a final project, uh, I, I think I did one for like a the LA Olympics um, product that I'll probably hold back. You know, if you see a product for it, you know, you remember where you saw me. Um, but overall, I think mostly it's it's picking out the ones from a feedback standpoint that are the strongest to hold back. I think the interim ones to me and I, um, I, I hope you feel the same way, like the pieces that we've done already for this internship curriculum, like I will definitely hold those back um, because they are on current event type uh, topics. And so, you know, who knows if that may be the piece um, that you could submit or already have a leg up if it becomes something that you're assigned. All right. Looks like we have one final question here. Um, somebody who has been coaching in high school um, and has also been in sports broadcasting for the community college. Uh, is this something that he would, um, that would be useful for an internship? Uh, can you, I guess this would be more kind of a, a broader question as far as how did you guys look at setting up the internship? Um, I guess, um, were you guys looking into that before? I mean, obviously times have changed. Um, but were you guys looking into the process for setting up internships before? So I have been, I was looking at internships um, from when I started the program. I actually started with the Orioles and um, that's when I decided I wanted to kind of go in the um, sport management route. Uh, so then that's when that summer I decided to apply to Kansas and um, go through the program. So ever since then, I've been looking for internships um, and kind of experiences with professional sports teams throughout the entire two years. Um, for me, it was a little different because because I work full time, it's been kind of hard to look for internships, but I knew that was part of the program. So starting probably end of last year, beginning this year is when I really started to look to see what kind of internships that I would uh, like to be a part of. And then COVID kind of happened, kind of messed up some things. But um, they also, if you can't find things on your own, you can work with you know, your professors, um, like uh, Justin was saying, they, they put on the Facebook program, or the, sorry, the Facebook page, they post different internships, um, like maybe not necessarily weekly, but as they come up, they'll, they'll post them. So if, you, if you're having a hard time finding them on your own, they'll help you find an internship as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly local, um, and not too far from the KU campus. So I had looked into quite a few within the, within the area, uh, specifically with the NAIA in Kansas City. Um, it was like down the street from my current office. So that seemed like a logical fit. So from an internship, I was trying to get in with them because they hire uh, compliance um, positions at an intern level. Uh, obviously looked into GA positions at KU. Um, as well as, you know, some internships, they'd be quasi internships with some of the youth soccer clubs here uh, in the area that I work with. They would be more, uh, you know, towards future positions in an administrative sense. But yeah, there was there was some internship availabilities and then everything kind of flipped on its head, you know, maybe as far back as February where you started to kind of think what's what's plan B. Um, and then, and then obviously the program was extremely flexible and put together this in internship curriculum. All right, great. Um, so it looks like there is one more question and I think part of this I can actually take on. Um, and then maybe you guys can chime in just on maybe Brandon on what the experience was like. So usually with the uh, internship component of the degree program, it's a 120 hour internship component. And um, usually it can be broken up over a few different semesters. So like for students, if they're working full time um, and let's say you don't have the time to go, you know, and do an, uh, an internship. So they allow you to uh, break it up. So for every 40 hours that are worked, um, it is considered one credit hour and the internship component is a three credit hour component. 
Um, so Brandon, when you think in terms of just like the internships, um, how did, did you complete the internship component in the, in the program already? And did you do it within the eight week time frame, or how did that go for you? So I, uh, my internship was with the Orioles. I did it last season. You can't have anything this season, obviously right now. Um, so I completed it last season and, um, they're allowing me to use it for the internship class this eight week, um, submit paperwork and stuff now. Um, but I found that extremely helpful. Um, it kind of helped me narrow down kind of the direction I wanted to go in the sports field. Um, I was able to, they had set up meetings with um, different people in the, in the um, organization to talk about what they do. Um, I was able to help with social media nights and um, theme nights and create my own market, uh, marketing plan with, for the organization to present it. So um, it definitely helped me um, to kind of grow my knowledge with a sport team specific. Okay, great. So it looks like um, we have about five minutes left. So I just want to make sure um, if there are any additional questions out there, please take the time to uh, send those questions in as we have a few moments. Um, you know, so if any additional questions lingering out there, please feel free to ask now. I guess we could open, take this chance to open it up to, to you guys. Is there anything you guys want to have to say about the program? Want to say about the program? Uh, I mean, that you haven't, you know, we haven't asked the right question. Um, this is this is your guys' time. We're we're really excited to have your guys' input. Um, do you guys have any question, like anything you guys want to share? Uh, I I will say for me, going in, so I don't necessarily know what it is exactly that I want to do. I kind of had an idea, but then once I started the program, I learned about so many different job opportunities that there were a couple of things that um, kind of caught my eye. So now it's like trying to figure out, okay, what it is that I really want to do. So you learn about so many different other opportunities that you didn't necessarily know was available in the sports industry. So I thought that was really good. I had the same experience in terms of, I, I thought I had a, a pathway. It was, it was all going to be based upon building on previous work and everything experience. And I would say, you know, again, being open-minded to, to understanding that every single course you take may be the pathway you like. Uh, it, it, I thought I was going to be legal and I can honestly say that I don't think I'm necessarily going to be in compliance or want a job in compliance after finishing the program um, just because the, it changed my mind towards potentially doing other things that may be more long-term uh, happy. I mean that's the major reason why I joined the program was because 10 years in one field didn't necessarily fit fit the bill so I was uh, young enough and had the flexibility enough to be able to go back. And I think for me, um, kind of to piggyback off what they've been saying is that I've been able to narrow down um, what I like to do and kind of through um, creating a marketing plan. I didn't know if I wanted, I wanted, thought I wanted to do marketing, but maybe after taking a class, I didn't really want to head the marketing direction anymore. Um, so I think it just kind of helps um, narrowing down what your interests are and what you kind of have more passion for within the um, sports realm. Great. Okay. Well, it looks like I have one final question that we can take really quickly here. Um, when you think in terms of your admissions process when you first started, uh, what was your admissions process like? For me, I remember the admissions process being very simple. Um, I remember um, my first having a phone call with the admissions department and um, everybody being extremely friendly, nice, um, talking to them and explaining everything. Um, I submitted everything um, that they required. It was really a simple, um, easy. I hey, remember it was a short process too. I, I feel the same with Brandon. It, it was very smooth and easy, very smooth and easy. Like everything was, everything that was said happened. Like I didn't feel like what was told in the beginning was kind of like not what the program is about. But I felt like everything that explained to you ahead of time is something that actually does happen. I mean, it was it was pretty prototypical getting getting your applications, your your letters, and all of those things together. And then, you know, like these guys have been saying, it, it, truly, if there was an advisor, might have might have even been one of these two. Uh, that's you know, if you had a deficiency or something like that, that just you needed to go back to the drawing board, and get something done. I mean, they were they were helpful getting you getting anything you may have missed, making sure that you got it, all your T's crossed and I's dotted. Jeremiah, did you have anything that you wanted to add or anything that you can think of at all? 
Uh, I don't have a lot to add other than, than thank you to, to our presenters as we're kind of wrapping up here. Um, this is the fact that you guys are so passionate about the program that you're willing to spend this time with us is incredible. We're so thankful to have you speak on, on the, on the program. Absolutely. So the one thing that I want to add, if you guys happen to have any questions regarding the program, or whether if you're uh, working with Jeremiah or if you're working with uh, myself, you can always feel free to reach out to us directly regarding any questions that you may have about the program. Um, our next potential time frame to start classes would be August 24th. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us directly. Uh, Brandon, Tamia, Justin, thank you so much for your time today. It really means a lot for you to take out time in your busy schedule just to spend this time with us. Uh, so again, I definitely want to thank you for your time. Uh, thank you everyone for attending today. Rock Chalk. Yep, Rock Chalk. Everybody stay safe.